Um, so one of the ideas we've, we've come up with is looking at movements as producers rather than individuals. So, um, and really getting away from this idea of this individual producer and what, you know, what happens at moments of mo in moments of social movement mobilization and what is produced. Is that culture significantly different from other cultures? Um, and how does it redefine what it means to be an artist? Um, I'm going to show you a clip from the Chicago Women's Graphics Collective. This video just recently, um, uh, what's the word? Preserved, and I don't think it was shown, I don't think it's ever been shown prior to this show since when it was made in the 70s. Um, and the Chicago Women's Graphics Collective was <coughs> a, um, there was a thing called the Chicago Women's Liberation Union, and they had a band, they had health care uh, uh, project, and they had this, this printmaking collective. And in this clip, it's really kind of like a, there's a, it's really like a consciousness raising group, but they're making a poster for United Farm Workers. Um, so there's this real connection, interconnection between different kinds of movements and interests. Um, and this is where we're talking about movement as producer because, well, you'll see. Check it out. Early in 1973, the Women's Graphics Collective began working on a poster for the United Farm Workers who are organizing a boycott of non-union lettuce and grapes. The collective formed three years ago to produce posters which would give visual form to the struggles of the women's movement and other political groups. The women in the collective find that working collectively is the best way to produce politically relevant posters and the best way for them to grow as artists and as women. I was doing a lot of stuff with the independent movement and I wound myself up, I found out helping all these other women find things for them to do. And I said, well, find something for me to do. <laughs> And it really just came out of that. And uh, I called Barbara. It was probably the only time in my life that I tried to call her. She was there. <laughs> and I said, what's happening in the women's movement? And I said, what's it do? <laughs> and she told me to go to graphics. So I decided I would give it a try. There was so much art, political art, that was really down. And we just didn't. And that's now what the women's movement was not down. It was such a high. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels so good that we really wanted to do that in posters. I wasn't really clear that I was an artist. I mean, it was my being with Graphics Collective that really clarified that in my mind. You know, I never, I would never call myself an artist. I was just, I was a, just a woman who puts their own art, you know. I had never known any artists that would do anything collective. Everybody I had known was very much into their own thing. Yeah, well, the important thing was that we wanted to work on Collective, we had this word collective. We, we all knew we wanted to be a collective, but we didn't know what it was, so we would ask all the time. I walked in, you know, I'd never been here before. They hand me a hammer and go, you know, here, you know, like, of course I could do it, why not? You know, yeah, right. they showed me what to do and they started doing it. It was great. So, um, you can, that's like a 26 minute video, you, you can check it out over there on the first floor. We're just going to run through a couple more examples of this. Uh, one of, for me, one of the most exciting is in South Africa uh, in the early 1980s as the anti-apartheid movement really um, blossomed and became public. Um, you had the development of community print shops, uh, both in the major cities, in Cape Town and Johannesburg. And then these print shops would train um, South Africans that lived uh, out in rural areas that were being forced off their communities into what were called Bantu stongs, basically concentration camps. And these communities would develop their own print shops. And so you can see on the walls here just this explosion of cultural production. And with the vast majority of people making these posters weren't trained as artists. They came in as activists, as movement um, participants, and were quickly trained how to use the equipment. So screening is really easy to do and then we're producing posters the next day. Uh, and then taking that knowledge and spreading it around the rest of the country. And I also, I just want to add in that one, is that um, there are moments, uh, there are pieces in the show that were really made under really extreme conditions, and not this particular one, but some of the other print shops were firebombed by the government. So the act of, of participating in just the production of these images was, was a very, um, What's the word? Uh, serious, activity. serious activity. Thank you.
Um, this one is, um, and this, this actually, it actually flows into this one, which is um, arpieras, which were made, actually this, um, again, this was under very repressive conditions. These were produced uh, during the Chilean dictatorship, and um, the Catholic churches kind of organized um, women to come in and, and do the sewing projects and make these, these stories, these, these um, textiles that were then distributed internationally. So at a point where free speech was completely repressed, it was through these kind of forms that the ideas got out that what was actually happening in, in Chile at the time, and it also uh, raised money for them as well. It's another example. Yeah, although not to be romanticized, it seems to be true that under repressive conditions, people come up with increasingly creative ways to express themselves. 